All right, today we're talking about the song Gotta Jaboo by the band Fish. Cool, it's a great song. Um, fairly easy. It's just these, mainly just these two chords right here, this E to a D right there, right? It's this really cool inversion that Trey loves. So that's pretty much the whole tune right there. That little lick I'm doing is similar to what Trey's doing. I'm not exactly sure exactly what he's doing, but... So it's like... And then... Something like that. Like, it's kind of hard to play slow. So I'm sliding up, and I'm doing a high E. And then I'm doing like... Pulling off. So it's like getting a double there. Something like that. Uh, hopefully that's helpful. But yeah, it's just mainly those two chords. Mama, mama sing, sang, what you got, you boo? Mama sing, got a jaboo. Mama sing, sang, what you got, you boo? Papa sing, got a jaboo too. Mama sing, sang, what you got, you boo? Papa sing, got a jaboo. Mama sing, sang, what you got, you boo? Got your boo and you keep on drinking too. That's it. And then there's this walk up, this bridge part towards the end of the song, uh, before the jam, where they do these thirds, and Trey's playing this. And so it's this third here where you've got an E note, an E right there with your second finger, and this is this D flat here. So it's the third walk up. So you're gonna do, there's two shapes, right? There's ones where they're stacked on top of each other like this, and then there's one where the second finger is ahead of a fret above the first finger. So you go stacked, stacked, ahead, ahead, stacked, stacked, and then this one is stacked. You jump up a string for that. Stack, stack, so. Hopefully that's helpful. That's the first one. The second one at the top, it goes there instead of that other. Boom, boom. Kind of resolves on that E. So like, theoretically what's happening there, I kind of try to figure it out. And the bass is doing an A mixolydian. And the keys seem to be kind of matching that same thing with some sort of, uh, you know, cordial, cordial thing there. And then what I think Trey is doing is he's sort of harmonizing with that A mixolydian, mixolydian by starting on the E note, the, the fifth, right? So here's your, your one of the A mixolydian. There's your five. He's starting down here and playing thirds all the way up in that A mixolydian. Um, is my understanding of it, I believe, is what's happening there. So there's that, you know, that's the whole song. And then just talking about how to jam on top of it, uh, you know, this is a thing I always look for, I look for often, or when I notice it, I'm aware of it, is when there's two major chords, right? When a chord progression has two major chords, a whole step apart, you know, D, uh, I'm sorry, E to D, uh, whole step apart, right? 
that usually tells me that it's the fourth and fifth chord of that key. And so that gives me a lot of information, knowing that uh, I can use the fourth chord. Uh, the fourth mode of the key would be Lydian, you know, or the fifth mode would be Mixolydian, which is sort of what I prefer a lot of times. I use the Mixolydian a lot, um, but I always, I often, try to use the the mode that feels like home and usually home to me is usually one of the chords and a lot of times it can be that first chord so in this case you got that e to the d but the real the real thing i listen to is which chord do i feel like it resolves on you know like which chord sort of holds the weight of the chord progression and in this one to, in my opinion you know what i'm hearing is that e Know, the song like it wants to resolve on that E right uh, and another way to sort of test that that out for my ear is like I will pedal that note so that chord progression is playing and I'll just pedal and I'll try that note and then I'll try the other note that I think might be home which in this case would likely be a D note because the other chords D so I'll try and they both work they both you know they're both in the key but in my opinion home feels like E in this chord progression. Now, if it was to go the other way around, if it was to go D, that probably would be, in my opinion, the D being home, and that's where I would use the D, the D Lydian. So, like, read the Reba Jam, for example, is a great example. I think it's E flat. It's going four to the five. Like home for me is gonna be that, that E flat Lydian. Um, so, you know, the order of the chords has a lot to say, gives you a lot of information. Um, when you add more than two chords, you get a lot more information. When it's just two, it can kind of go a lot of different ways. But, um, you know, so that's my take. So what I'm thinking is E mixolydian for this, the, the fifth mode, since the E is the five, fifth chord, the D is the fourth chord. And if, if E was five, D was four, what would the key be? A, right? So A major works all day. But like, I'm very rarely thinking A major when I'm playing, you know, soloing on top of this E to D chord progression. So I'm kind of up here a lot, you know, catching that flat seven right there, flat seven right there. You know, and kind of following the chord progression too, where it's like, play that one to the flat seven there it's moving with that chord progression right you know so um, so I'm kind of thinking that uh, overall when I'm playing this stuff live you know I've studied these modes a, a lot and gotten really familiar with them and understand how they relate to each other which is very important but I think I kind of let just my ear take over and just sort of navigate me through where I melodically play. And um, as I've been teaching more and more people, it seems to be something they're really interested in, like how can I be more melodic and not so scalar based? And I think a great exercise for getting better at that is trying to play melodies on the guitar, like vocal melodies or nursery rhymes, um, or just singing a melody to yourself. So if like you just saying, Mary had a little lamb. Like, try to find the mare. Mare, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Now, as you know, simple as that may sound and feel, uh, it's very useful. It's very helpful. And if you can sort of 
sing a note and then go find it pretty quick or sing a melody and find it pretty quick or hear a melody or hear you know notes or hear a riff anything anything you hear just try to copy it mimic it on the guitar as fast as you can that's a really great exercise to kind of train the the, the ear to be able to kind of play what it hears and then the next step is just kind of you know tell your ear what it hears like like sing a song or sing a melody or something you know while you're playing uh, humming or singing singing notes can be really helpful too you know so if you're in key That's a good exercise to do, you know, just do it slow too, like um, that's a really good exercise to do. Uh, so um, I have a good friend uh, that I've been teaching lessons, doing lessons with, um, Matt James, and he's got this really cool YouTube page uh, playing with the band, and he has isolated um, these fish tracks, these fish live fish songs, and pulled Trey out of the mix, and so it's these amazing backing tracks, and his YouTube is playing with the band, and he's been kind enough to share um, his tracks with me and let me you know jam over them and said I could use them in this lesson, and I'm going to put it on here and then just sort of noodle on top of it, jam on top of it, so you can kind of see, get an idea, maybe what I'm thinking um, while I'm doing it, and sort of see. So let's move this here and get this going. Yeah, so there's Trey. Trey doing his... Uh, yeah, Trey doing his uh, um, siren there. So, you know, like just... Right away, just that high E, right?
Yeah, I mean, it's hard to really know what Trey's playing without hearing him. I, I haven't really listened to that. James, my first kind of go, just soloing on top of it. Matt just gave me that file today. And, like, you know, really focusing in on what Mike and Paige are doing, too, can really inspire, I think, Trey or inspire anybody that you're playing with. You're playing with another keyboard player or a bass player. But in this this <laughs> chord progression, like, Mike's pretty much is playing that. He holds it down the whole time with the... So you don't get too many ideas from him. It's kind of a free-for-all. And then Paige is really, you know staying pretty solid to just kind of that E to D chord with some, he's throwing in some trickling and some nice melodies and inversions and stuff up there too. And there was some ideas there, but if you get a, you know, a, a type two jam or a jam that sort of leads the chord progression. And this is what fish is the best at is where like one guy has an idea, you know, musical idea. And then the other two hear it and kind of latch on and it kind of just goes all over the place. That's a lot of fun too, but this is a good, great example to a great song to just jam on top of where you don't have to, you know, think too much. Just really stay in that E mixolydian and you're good to go the whole time. It didn't leave it once, that whole jam there, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, that's my lesson. We're at about 20 minutes here, and uh, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, you know, please uh, ask. Um, I appreciate you watching these and, and leaving comments and stuff. And um, I teach guitar lessons as well in person and remote. And uh, I'll, you know, show you everything I know if you got any questions. All right, y'all. Uh, be well. Peace.